We were told that the trade deal was done, complete, totally finished. We just need to dot our I's and cross our T's. But then we heard some more detail and it started to raise some eyebrows. Computer algorithms didn't care, they just kept buying. But those who actually care to know the truth have been asking questions ever since. Why are the full details reportedly not to be disclosed to the public? How will any part of this deal actually be enforced by either side? Of course, all of this is really just a small step to the real deal, the phase two. Oddly, we haven't seen any actual facts, really just promises. Trade optimism is all that's needed to keep this game going, it seems. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's happening with the trade deal between China and the US. Of course, this is integral to what's happening in the economy. The markets love it as well. As I mentioned in the introduction, the computer algorithms only care about trade optimism. And then we have actual people that buy based on what they see as the market goes higher. They buy more and more. The underlying issues don't seem to matter anymore. In this video, we're going to talk about how China will wait for fair market prices before buying U.S. agriculture. They're not just going to go out there and buy whatever they believe is the right amount. If it's 50 billion, so we heard, is it 40 billion this year? And then they have to step that up next year. Who knows? But according to China, they're going to have to wait for the right time to buy. Not a good sign already since we haven't even seen a signed deal yet. China has already set up massive agriculture deals with Argentina and Brazil, and I don't think a lot of people realize this. They think this entire time they simply haven't been eating any soybeans. Well, that's not the case. Stock market has entered overbought levels on the RSI. I wanted to get this just briefly at the end. I'll talk about it, as well as the Fed's Rosengren warning about asset price inflation. Since when do we ever see the Fed on any level talking about asset price inflation? This right here I thought was key, so I wanted to make sure to mention it to you. China won't rush into agriculture purchases under the phase one deal. And that's important to note because what we have been expecting is that they are immediately going to be going out there and they're going to be putting a huge order for these U.S. farmers. And it doesn't look like that's the case. Further along in this article, Kehoe's comments underline the continuing challenges for U.S. growers competing in crop markets with products from Brazil and Argentina. And those are two countries I want to highlight today. I'm going to show you a lot of statistics statistics surrounding that where currencies have weakened against the US dollar in the past three months Chicago soy and corn prices have gained more than five percent these are business people they're going to have to be in a competitive situation otherwise they're not going to buy it so we need to understand what that means for the US because if they're expecting a certain amount of soybeans a certain amount of crops and they don't get that we're gonna have some big issues because this this is not going to fix erosion that we've had in this sector. And one last point here, announcing the phase one trade deal on Friday, China also stressed it has increased buying based on market conditions and following the WTO rules, adding that it will import agricultural products from the US and other countries. And of course, the two big names are Brazil and Argentina. This was back in October. Just wanted to show you it because it's very relevant. After trade talks in the US, China ramps up Brazilian soy purchases. I know the font is quite small, but at the bottom it says the purchases from Brazil rather than the United States show that Chinese buying has been driven more by price than policy since last week's preliminary trade agreement was brought up in the media. Now, looking at this article here, I found some more information from Reuters. Exclusive China set to deepen Argentine trade ties with bid for grains superhighway. So this goes much further into simply just buying soybeans. Chinese state-owned construction giant CCCC is preparing a bid to dredge Argentina's Parana River, the country's main cargo superhighway that takes soy and corn from the Pampas farm belt to the shipping lanes of the South Atlantic and the world. I think we're expanding far beyond anything that the average investor is aware of at this point. 
CCCC is at the forefront of China's push to lock in food supplies by investing in commodities transport hubs globally. Dredging the Piranha is the biggest logistics contract in Argentina. China is already the main buyer of Argentine soybeans, and this particular Chinese-owned conglomerate has become the biggest agricultural commodities exporters operating in China. So clearly, Clearly, China is already the main buyer of Argentine soybeans, while this particular Chinese state-owned conglomerate through their acquisitions has become the biggest agricultural commodities exporter operating in Argentina. Clearly, there are massive ties in between these two countries that a lot of people simply aren't aware of. And that connection here is important because they each have beneficial aspects to this. China wants the soybeans, they want to get people working, they want global investments. Argentina has the agriculture, they want to make it happen. They're willing to do so, they want to get their economy to rise up, they want to help their businesses, they want to deal with the structural issues that are there. Their currency had weakened significantly as we saw, and of course, so has all of the others compared to the US dollar. So when you're doing business with the US, and your currency has been beaten up, it would be nice to have a trading partner that you can do something with where you're not going to lose out big time because of what has happened in the foreign exchange markets. So we need to pay attention to this, what China is doing with Argentina specifically. I know that they are basically investing everywhere all over the world now. Massive investments going on in South America as well as Africa, but it's happening all over the place. They make it very clear what they want to do, and it's quoted here, invest across international agricultural supply chains to better control supply and pricing. That's exactly what this is about. From 2005 through the first half of this year, China invested about $579 billion internationally in the energy, power, transport, and agricultural sectors. And they mentioned 71 billion going to South America. So we see how much money is flooding into these countries. It is a lot of money. It is significant. And of course, I want to see what happens with this whole trade deal going through. If it ever happens, will China still advance their ties with Brazil and Argentina? Or will we see that slowly weaken? Well, of course, I will bring anything relevant to you. So stay tuned. I want to show you several charts here. This is the US China trade of goods structure. Left hand side, you can see US exports to China 130 billion, US imports from China 530 billion. Clearly, a difference there. You could see the breakdown as they give it to you, what that includes. You can see it for yourself if you're interested. Obviously, there is a massive need for China to export goods to the US. That's why the deficits are so ridiculous right now. And of course, that doesn't look good in a time like this. Despite what we have with interest rates, this cannot be sustained forever. This right here just gives you a visual identification of where all of these agricultural vessels are moving to and from. I've shown you this before. This is just giving you an idea of where they're moving to. And obviously the direction is very, very clear. Major exports coming out of Brazil and Argentina on their way to China. Market share of China's soybean imports, the white area there, the white line is Brazil and the US right about at 10% or so. Looks like something has clearly changed over the last little while. This could easily be shifted around. So that's just how it is at this point in year. Obviously, over the last couple of years, China had been weaning off of the US and instead have been looking at other partners. China's soybean imports by country, Brazil is the yellow, Argentina is that purple color, and the United States being the red. This is always fluctuating, it's always in flux, so it depends on that time. We need to look at the political situation, maybe there's certain stockpiles that form up, what about trade deals, and so on. This just gives you an idea of which countries are most relevant. So that's all the trade deal talk. 
I want to look at what's going on in the stock market itself. And this here might be difficult to see on your screen, but essentially what we're looking at is the S&P 500 and how ridiculous it has been. At the top over here, this is the RSI, and it gives you an idea of where the S&P 500 is in terms of whether it's overbought or oversold. And you can see right here, it has moved above the 70 mark and 70 essentially tells us that at this time it's overbought that could change in a day but usually when it makes it up to this point we do have a correction even if that correction is just slight usually does happen i don't know what's going to set it off at this point but clearly we have moved our way into the overbought territory the last time this happened we did see that come down a little bit we'll see if there's a repeat scenario the Fed's Rosengren was one of the few individuals who voted against all of the rate cuts. That's what they talk about in the first paragraph here. But I wanted to note what he said down at the bottom. If you look at the last two recessions, they were not situations where inflation got out of control. They were situations where asset prices went way up and then went way down. So if your goal is to avoid recessions, I think we need to be pretty focused on asset prices, not just inflation. You look at the PCE, core PCE rate that the Federal Reserve loves to do, and you see that it is actually less than two percent this is a joke everybody knows that at this point but what else is new that's all for this video if you found it informative hit that thumbs up button when you hit the like button you are supporting this channel so i do appreciate that very much if you want to learn about business if you want to learn about passive income i've got all the details you need in my e-course it's completely free the amazon gps Com. If you want to learn about the financial industry, if you want to understand it with no jargon, no complicated aspects to it whatsoever, you can check out my two books. They are located in the description. If you want the audiobook, it's at themoneygps.com. Hey, wait a minute, don't go anywhere. You have to watch this video. It's very important, gets into a lot of detail. I think will interest you. Check it out. I'll see you.